Here's the problem. Determine the rated speed of a highway curve of radius rho equals 400 feet banked at an angle theta equals 18 degrees. So I've sketched that out. Here's the um, the road is banked at 18 degrees. So there's an 18 degree angle here. Um, and here you can see the back of a car I've, I've sketched. We've got two tires shown there. And those contact the road like this and the car is um, appears at an angle of 18 degrees because that's how the road is banked. We we solve this as we always do by writing the the simple equation Newton's law the sum of all the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration and let's let's start with the sum of all the forces so what forces are present here well we've got really two forces uh, we have the the weight of the car uh, so I'm gonna draw it right right here we've got the weight which is equal to mass times gravity straight down and we have a, a reaction force due to the normal, you know, the road here. And so we've got a force like this, and we'll call that R. And so that, that's the, those are all the forces. That's the sum of all the forces on there. And we have to e um, set that equal to the mass times the acceleration. Is there any acceleration going on here? Well, what do we have? We have... Uh, we have a car essentially traveling in the equivalent of a circle at a constant speed at the, and that's going to be the rated speed so if it's traveling at a constant speed in a circle is there any acceleration yes if it were traveling at a constant speed in a straight line there would be no acceleration but there is an acceleration in uniform circular motion and that acceleration we can represent we, we has only a normal component we call it the a sub n, and it has the magnitude v squared divided by the radius of this circle, and that's that has a radius rho in this case, where rho is going to be 400 feet. So here's how we're going to solve this problem. We've got the sum of all the forces, and that's and we have to take the vector sum r plus the weight so that's the reaction force plus the weight and that's going to equal the mass times the acceleration now the the only trick here is that we have to choose the right coordinate system if we choose the wrong coordinate system we're going to get lost in a sea of algebra uh, and be confused by all the vectors. So we really have to make a smart choice about the coordinate system. What should we choose? Well, we're going to kind of choose a hybrid coordinate system. We'll deal with with these. What we know is that there's no y acceleration. So uh, in this direction, we've got y up, and we'll call it the y direction. Um, there's no the the car isn't flying. So we know that the, the sum of the y components is zero. But x in this case, which um, I'm going to draw as this way, so we've got x in this direction. Um, and so instantaneously, x looks like that's what we're going to have to deal with. The, the, uh, the acceleration is in that direction. It's towards the center of the circle. So we're going to first do the, the y components of the acceleration. And so we know that the sum of all just the y components should be equal to zero because there's no lift, there's no direction off the ground. The car isn't flying. So what do we have to write here? We've got um, r cos theta. That's the th this part for the y components minus the weight 
equals zero. So how do we know that this is the cosine of theta and not the sine? Uh, well, you know, you what you need to do is go back here, um, take a look at the theta, and so take the simplest case. If theta were zero, and imagine this angle here closing down to zero, so it's a flat road, um, then we would have r and w working exactly together. So r is not reduced at all. And so if theta equals zero, you would want this term to equal one. And that's what you get with r cosine theta. If you tried r sine theta, um, if theta equals zero, then this term would equal zero. Now for the part of r that is left over, and that's the, the r sine theta, that's what we're going to need In to set equal to the mass times the normal acceleration. And what we're going to do now, I'm going to speed through this, is um, condense all the units into a consistent thing. So we've got W and M, and these are related. And let me do that now. And so, there's our solution. V squared equals G rho tan theta. Now I want to show you a tool here, a useful tool for calculating the numerical value. Here's the Wolfram Alpha. Um, they call it a knowledge engine. So you just type this into your um, web browser. And in, in the search box, you type the equation you're looking for. And so here I've got V equals, you can see I've written it, V equals the square root of 32.2 feet per second squared. That's G times 400 feet. Times the tan of 18 degrees. And you can see I put the units in there. So it'll take care of all my units. And so just hit enter and see what it comes up with. Uh, oh, it looks like I made an error here. It says an attempt was made to fix mismatched perimeters. I think that means my parentheses are screwed up. So let me try and fix that. Okay, here's the problem. Let me, uh, I need to put the parentheses around the entire value I want the square root around and uh, also around each individual value in there. So we've got G rho and then the tan theta, so there's tan theta, and I think I need an extra one, yeah, right here at the end. That was my error message. Let's try this again. Oh, great, it looks like it worked. So here um, it tells you what the, it interpreted my input as. V equals the square root of this entire value, which is just what I wanted. 32.2 feet per second squared times 400 feet times the tan of 18 degrees. And here is the result. 64.69 feet per second. That's great. I can uh, click on that. Well, let me first write this down on our solution. 64.49 feet per second. Well, that's, uh, that's the solution to the problem. We may want to, well, of course, we want to know, let's look at that in terms of something more useful. No one knows how many feet per second they're traveling in a car. And so I want to um, convert this to miles per hour. You can do that over here. If I just click here on this value, it'll come back, feed that into the knowledge engine, and give me 64.69 feet per second is equal to all these different unit conversions, including meters per second, miles per minute, and the one we're interested in, 44.107 miles per hour. So let me write that down now in the solutions. 44.1 miles per hour. And there you go. That's it for today.